Okay, in this video we're going to talk about chemical reactions. So chemical reactions occur when a chemical bond is either formed, broken, or rearranged. And these reactions can be written in chemical equations. Now these equations have reactants and products. The reactants are those chemicals that can react together to make your product, which are the resulting chemical end products. Now, um, when we write out our chemical equation, it's in the form of this molecular formula. So that water is written in this molecular formula way, and so is glucose like this. And it just tells us the number of atoms that are, you find in each of these molecules. So you have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom make H2O or water, or C6H12O6 makes glucose. Now the subscript indicates the number of atoms that are joined by bonds, Whereas a prefix, which we don't see here, but that would denote the number of unjoined atoms or molecules. So an example of this sort of prefix denotation here would be uh, in the reaction of four hydrogen atoms and one carbon atom, this can yield methane, which is CH4. So what this is saying is that four separate hydrogen atoms, these are not bound together, but four separate ones, and one separate carbon atom can all combine together to form one molecule of CH4, where these are bound, and that forms what we call methane. And this is also written out similarly with, you know, uh, one hydrogen atom and one hydrogen atom can make hydrogen gas here. So uh, there's actually three main major types of chemical reactions. We have synthesis reactions first, which are, involve atoms or molecules that combine to form larger, more complex molecules. So an example of a synthesis reaction would be an anabolic or building pathway where molecule A plus molecule B make molecule AB. Or you could say atom A plus atom B make molecule AB. So an example of a synthesis reaction could be in something like the building of a protein. So we know that uh, proteins are made of building blocks called amino acids. Now individual amino acids, which are all types of molecules, can combine through a synthesis reaction to form one large protein molecule here. So from A and B, you can make you know, molecule AB. In this example, it's just a longer chain, though, of a molecule. This is an example of a synthesis reaction. Now, when you go from small, lots of smaller molecules to a larger one, we call this an anabolic reaction. So anabolic reactions are typically the building up of larger molecules. So your body can, can have anabolic pathways where you can take individual amino acids to make a large protein molecule. Now, a decomposition reaction is the opposite of synthesis, and this is where reactions involve the breakdown of a molecule into smaller components or constituent atoms or molecules. Think of this as like the reverse of synthesis. We call this catabolic, which is typically bond-breaking reactions. So an example of this would be like molecule AB can be broken apart into A plus B, uh, or molecule AB can be broken apart into atom A plus B. So an example of a decomposition reaction could be like the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. This actually happens in your liver where, and skeletal muscle, where if you want to release more glucose or sugar in your bloodstream, you can break it apart in its, from its stored form, glycogen, into lots of smaller pieces where individual glucose molecules now can be utilized by the cells of your body or even your brain to keep your brain alive. So glycogen is broken into smaller glucose molecules, this is actually a catabolic path pathway, a.k.a. decomposition reaction. Now, an exchange reaction is also called the displacement reaction, and it involves both synthesis and decomposition. This is where bonds are both made and broken. And think of this as like a shuffling of atoms or molecules, where AB plus C could actually be turned into AC plus B, where certain atoms or molecules are sort of swapped out. Or A, B, and C, D can, can actually form molecules A, D, and molecules C, B. So it's really just a shuffling or arrangement, rearrangement or exchange of atoms or molecules. So an example of this is actually ATP. So um, with uh, an exchange reaction in the body, ATP is a very common one. So adenosine triphosphate and glucose can actually be rearranged or exchanged to actually form ADP and uh, glucose 6-phosphate. So uh, this is just an example of um, a type of exchange reaction that we'll get to when we talk about metabolism later. Now, uh, in terms of other types of chemical reactions, um, in living systems, chemical reactions can be talked about in terms of their redox or reduction oxidation reactions. So atoms are reduced when they gain electrons 
and oxidize when they lose electrons. A good uh, kind of a mnemonic for this is oil rig. So oil, oxidation is loss. Rig, reduction is gain of electrons. So an example of this would be glucose, which is C6H12O6, and oxygen. When these combine, you can actually can form uh, you know, six carbon dioxides, six waters, and ATP. And glucose is oxidized in this example. So you're actually, uh, glucose is actually losing electrons in this example. And oxygen is reduced, where oxygen gains electrons in this example. And ultimately, it yields ATP, which can actually power uh, some of your body's internal mechanisms. Now, uh, in terms of just energy flow and chemical reactions, uh, and this, this relates to basically properties of our universe. So all chemical reactions are either exergonic or endergonic. If we call them exergonic, this results in the net release of energy, where energy is sort of given off. This is where products have less potential energy than their reactants. And you find this in like catabolic and oxidative reactions. Endergonic is actually where you have a net absorption of energy, where it sort of, sort of uses up energy here. And it's where your products have more potential energy than their reactants, and you find this in anabolic reactions. So an example of an endergonic reaction would be the synthesis of ATP. That's actually anabolic. But when you use the energy in ATP, that's a catabolic reaction which gives off energy and your body can use that energy for work. This is also called exergonic. So these typically co-occur, right? Exergonic reactions will co-occur with endergonic and vice, or vice versa. But when we say give off or use up, you know, energy is never lost. It's just, it's always conserved. It's just used in one form. It just can be converted from one form to another, rather. Um, so in terms of uh, uh, showing different chemical reactions, Chemical reactions are theoretically reversible. So a lot of times you'll see that these chemical reactions are shown with arrows going in two directions. So we might say that A plus B can yield AB, right? This would be a synthesis reaction in this direction. From A plus B, you can get molecule AB. Or it could be a decomposition reaction in the opposite way, where you have AB can yield B plus A. Now, chemical equilibrium occurs if neither a forward nor reverse reaction is dominant. So if these are uh, balanced, where the forward rate of the reaction, A plus B equals AB, uh, is the same as uh, the reverse, AB yielding BA, then we say that uh, it's in chemical equilibrium. And um, many biological reactions are not very reversible. So a lot of these actually go in one way, so that uh, energy requirements to go backward are typically too high, so that once you have products, um, it's difficult to have those products turn back into reactants. So, uh, and this is good in terms of our body's stability. Now, in terms of the speed of chemical reactions, uh, we talk about this as rate. So, th the rate of chemical reactions in your body is influenced by a variety of factors. Things like temperature, concentration, and particle size all influence chemical reaction rate. So, typically, increasing temperature increases the rate of chemical reactions. Increasing the concentration of reactants also typically increases the rate of product formation. And also, if your particles are larger, it typically makes these reactions slower because the particles can't move as fast. If you have smaller particles, like individual atoms or small molecules, these can move more quickly, and they typically have a faster reaction rate than as a result. Now, catalysis is just basically the um, process where you can actually help to increase the rate of reaction. So catalysts are things like enzymes that can actually increase the rate of a biological reaction. So enzymes are biological catalysts.